Welcome, all lovely people, to Hummingbird 027's little garden. I want to show you what I've been up to for a little while. And this is not going to be a news video. Those are some nada peppers. Nada peño peppers means they're not hot. I am trying to <laughs> redo all of this half-hazardly, and nada peño means no hot, um, not hot jalapenos. So I'm trying to determine which plants I am able to harvest here in this place that I am using from my friends. So generously are giving me access to land to grow some food. So on their property, there are tons of high bush cranberries. These are the Alaskan variety. They are super good. You can actually make ketchup out of these. And that's what I have been doing this Sunday. I think it's Sunday the 26th. Anyway, um, I've been collecting these and raspberries and just basically foraging. And I want to show you a little bit more um, about all the stuff I've been doing. Working 14 to 16 hours a day right now, literally just trying to eke out an existence here for Shemitah. Um, yeah, pretty crazy. I'm dehydrating tomatoes, making sun-dried tomatoes. I'll show you all of that in just a few moments. I'm going to put together a collage of videos to kind of show you what I've been doing. I've been watching the news, and there's been some really big things that I probably should have made videos about. But at this time, you know, it's just not feasible I just don't have enough hours of the day right now and it's a month left basically until Shemitah starts. So that is my highest priority right now is to obey God's word and to keep Shemitah. So these high bush cranberries in Alaska, you can tell that they are the high bush cranberries because of these two little points um, and that they have, I forget the name of this, but they have leaves on both sides of the same stem and they have a gray uh, stem and they've got small little bundles as you can see you turn them upside down they're a little yellow underneath so they're not quite ripe yet but I have collected just a few of the ripe ones there's a couple of bright red ones in there and they got one major seed inside and they take taste just like cranberries it is phenomenal so here in about another week I'm probably going to be able to collect tons of high bush cranberries. They are all over this place. So I'll be making some fresh ketchup from high bush cranberries. It's kind of weird. And uh, most people who have never been to Alaska don't know this. And I didn't know this until I got here. But this is fireweed. And you can collect the flowers on here and make all sorts of cool little yummy recipes out of it. But once the flowers actually go up to the very top, that is the end of summer. So basically this is July, the very end of July. And it's about the middle, so we are definitely halfway through summer right now. And once it reaches the top, it, this fireweed is an indication that summer is over. For a little inside tour, I got some uh, parsley growing here. This is, I think, Italian giant parsley. And then I have some more uh, honey crisp apples growing all in here. More of that parsley. I have some red onions. These guys didn't do so good in the little greenhouse on this property. So I ended up just pulling them and I'm letting them dry. And then once they're dry, I will end up snipping them off and I'm going to tie them into little bundles. Hopefully I'll make a video and show you that. So there is, these are my green bell peppers. And hoping these guys are going to be awesome. 
They are growing very quickly. <laughs> I have a volunteer tomato in here. Um, so hopefully that works out. Oh, I also wanted to show you my lonely little watermelon. I planted some watermelon outside and it is not doing near as good as it is doing in here. So I'm just going to let it grow. But the, the parsley is just like, yeah, we love it in here. They love the heat and we're not getting any heat right now, which is sad. So, um, also going to be harvesting a lot of the rose hips um, once they are fully matured um, and both sides they all turn dark red um, they actually taste really good raw and so there are tons of these on the property and they are super loaded with vitamin C I am going to be eating those throughout Mita. So just kind of wanted to give you a look around. This place is just like the bush. It's like the back of the bush. <laughs> just beautiful flowers, some yarrow here. This actually comes in a variety of colors, violet, uh, pink, and lavender um, are prolific out here. If I get a chance, I'll show you some of that. Um, I had a pink lilac coming in here which is really cool to look at. And there's this beautiful viney. This is an invasive flower, but it is super beautiful. And you can find it in waste places all over Alaska. So I have dehydrated a ton. This is basically, I'm gonna say 12 tomatoes. And I cut them in half inch slices and um, basically this is sun-dried tomatoes and as you can see they are just really beautiful and the flavor of them uh, when you get them off is just really yummy and tangy I have yet to find out how they are when they're dehydrated the reason why there's all these holes in the actual tomato is because I am saving all the seeds and these are from Bell's Nursery in Anchorage, Alaska. These are these tomatoes basically remind me of my grandma. The type of tomatoes that she grew when I was a little girl and so I've saved every single seed that I possibly can and all of these are viable. Why? Because I have been growing them in my little air garden, whatever you want to call this thing. This thing is an awesome thing. I wish it had like 50 little holes in there. I could grow tons of crops in it. I'm thinking about that for the future. Um, tatsoi didn't do so well this year. I tried to grow a lot of tatsoi and it doesn't grow very well in this area so I'm going to plan on while I am not spending all my money on groceries since all of my vegetables are going to be preserved um, basically those are my first batch of sun-dried tomatoes and while I am feasting on these I am going to be growing um, not growing, saving money to buy a a couple of greenhouses and it's going to be the gothic greenhouses that I'm going to buy because you know I just I want this to be my life I want to be able to grow my own food I want to know where my food comes from it doesn't always look attractive but you know what if you put that in stews and it, you know, brings in that tangy taste. These are very tangy and they are delicious. So that's my plans. Um, hopefully it's all gonna work out here. I am working very hard. I work eight hours with my patient and then I come home and I do this stuff. I preserve and I'm putting away 
I am trying to get everything I can stocked up for Shmita. You know, I got to do lots of ragu, so my not my next check, but the check after that is going to be all for Shmita. So this whole thing is just going to be full to the brim of food, 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 food. So, yep. I wanted to show you my little pantry is getting bigger too. I'm going to be buying lots of olive oil. This whole shelf here is reserved for olive oil. Um, I've been stacking up on lots of soups. Um, I think these will stack three high, so I was going to buy. I don't know if you guys have been to the store lately at Walmart, but uh, the soup aisle is getting very bare. <laughs> And the noodle aisle is getting very bare, and I'm not sure if people are just like, you know, they know what's coming, and they're starting to stockpile stuff, but um, I've started to stockpile as much as I can. Um, my next big haul is going to be rice and beans and flour and sugar and lots of little condiments, and that's pretty much going to be it. So, yep. Doing the best I can here, folks. I know I haven't made a bunch of videos for news and all that, but I just wanted to show you all the cool little things that I'm doing that are going to be getting me through Shmita that you can be doing too. This is stuff that you need to learn. You need to learn this stuff, folks. You got to learn how to prepare. Look at that little heart. That's pretty cool. There's a little heart in my tomato there anyway thought I would just catch you all up to speed I'll do a little news articles and uh, yeah hopefully after September 6th through Rosh Hashanah I should be getting back to normal I don't know if I will be or not I don't even know if these guys are gonna make it cuz once Rosh Hashanah hits you're not supposed to gather from the things that you've planted anymore. Those things are to be left for the animals and for the poor among you. So, yeah. This is a free freezer that I was given by my friend and employer. I am starting to fill this sucker up. So, I ended up testing out some um, scrambled banana basically <laughs> so I ended up just putting some strawberries in my personal freezer inside and it ended up working out they were kind of mushy not really after they were thawed out but they they tasted good so I decided I was gonna start packaging these I did some cherries and these were pretty cool. Uh, they ended up working out really well. Um, they were a little mushy, not too bad when I unthawed them. And so they were just like almost perfect. And then I wanted to show you some of my asparagus. Asparagus is really good right now. Um, I blanched these for two and a half minutes and then cooled them down in water for just as long. And I've got lots of asparagus right now. I'm starting with red grapefruit. This is actually really good. It's almost perfect when you thaw it out. It's not very mushy at all. And so I've just been starting to do asparagus, little spears, and making little meals here. And all of this is going to get me through, you know. And this is the beginning. This thing is going to be totally full in the next few weeks this is the work i have ahead of me and so these are some of the things i'm going to buy in bulk when i get my second check here soon and then they will all be going in the freezer so yeah this is what i've been doing in my spare time just wanted you all to know i'm not blowing you off just shopping and chopping and preserving and dehydrating and cooking lots of pre meals like chicken soup with 
celery and carrots. I think down in here I got some broccoli soup. That looks really good. Broccoli and potato soup with carrots and onions. Lots of goodies. So just wanted to show you um, more of what I've been doing. These are from earlier in the year. But these are green and red bell peppers. Just buying them, cutting them up, freezing them. I tried to dehydrate banana chips, but I forgot to put in the citric acid. So they're a little brown, but they still taste good. I've been mixing lots of soups, broccoli um, and potato and carrot soups, uh, chicken uh, soups with lots of vegetables in there, some more grapefruit and, you know, freeze drying, honey crisp apples. So I've got lots So lots of those dehydrating. Basically, I'm either dehydrating, canning, cooking prepared meals like soups and stews. Also, um, I've basically come to the conclusion that I'm going to go through a lot of food so fast that canning, since canning supplies are in short supply, I'm basically not going to be able to get a lot of the canning supplies I need when I need them because, well, it's just unbelievably hard to find canning supplies. And when you do... They're like some off-the-wall brand, and they're super-duper expensive, like $20 for, you know, 12 pints. And I just can't justify the expense. And so I went with the whole freezing part of everything instead of uh, preserving it through canning methods, especially... Um, pressure canning and um, water bath canning. So I have opted to just go the freezer route for this Shemitah. Whatever I can't store in boxes of sawdust um, in my place where I live and keeping things like onions that I buy at the store, I'll go to, I'll make a Costco run and I'm going to buy a bunch of onions and potatoes and they're all going to go in totes with lids on them and they're all going to be kept in the dark as best that I can in sawdust or pine shavings which you can find at Walmart or any pet store. Um, I have decided that this is the best route for me at this point because it's I've been shortchanged basically and uh, all that I prepared for in the last two years was taken from me. So I have to start from scratch, which is sad. But um, the Lord has been with me the whole time that this has happened. And he showed me <laughs> so many graceful things like giving me a free deep freezer and allowing me to be able to use um, my friend's land that I can produce cabbage and cauliflower and butternut squash and all kinds of other things, tomatoes and, you know, whatever else is under the sun, basically. Well, under the cloudy sun, because we don't seem to get sun here in the north right now. Today it popped out for a little bit, a few hours, and it was very delightful. I wanted to end this video with this freaky picture. Um... The other day, I took my patient to uh, Elmendorf Air Force Base, and yes, I get access to the, all of that, and it's pretty fun going on base. I don't think I would ever want to be caught there when they raise the barriers or if some emergency was going on. That would be kind of freaky, but this is a new poster that has showed up in their, in their uh, I don't know what you would call it, their... They're little boards, and I just wanted to show you how creepy it looks. It just reminded me so much of a fallen angel, you know, because it's the picture of it is trying to like show the human body and how it's, you know, so complex, and it's showing the muscle tissues, all the muscle and everything. I just wanted to point out the wings. That is really freaking weird, right? So. It honestly reminded me of, if you've never watched the movie Silent Hill, 
you should probably check it out. It's it's pretty gruesome and pretty terrifying, but this is like something out of Silent Hill. <laughs> I just wanted to end the, the, <laughs> the whole video of this picture that is hanging up in the doctor's office on base, on Richardson Elmendorf base, while I was taking care of my patient on one of his visits with his family doctor. So I just wanted to give you a heads up. Um, also, another update about the CV-19 jab um, that my employers got. So my patient, uh, which is a retired veteran, he is not showing symptoms of any adverse reaction. However, his spouse has started to show terrible symptoms right now with her heart. And she's, it's almost like the jab exacerbated what was going on originally with her heart. So I want to be very clear while I'm closing this all out that she has now been diagnosed with an aorta aneurysm. So something happened in her heart to where she is in critical danger. Um, the cardiologist had told her that on a scale of one to five, he didn't tell her which side was actually the worst. He declared her to be a 4.2 and it wasn't until she was talking to some of the nurses that she realized a 4.2 was at the worst part of the spectrum of number five. Five being the worst and that you're going to have a heart attack, it's just a matter of time. So she is actually in critical condition, I would think. She's still able to mow the lawn and take care of herself and get through her day. She's a trooper, there's no doubt about it. Um, she's like superwoman. But the jab, I do believe, has harmed her. And I want to be sure that everyone knows the consequences of what's going on with this gene therapy that is being introduced to the human population all over the earth in every nation. Folks, know your rights. Know what God has told you your rights are. God said, don't put anything into your body that I have not declared clean or that is not from me. So be very clear about God's word as we enter these end of days, the beginning of sorrows and the tribulation, the 70th week of Daniel is right around the corner. So I want you all to be very careful and know why you're doing the things that you're doing. So at this point, I am doing everything I can with every spare moment I can to keep Shemitah. So once on September 6th at sunset when Rosh Hashanah, the Feast of Trumpets, and the Shemitah year begins, I will be keeping Shemitah to the best of my abilities and to the best of my knowledge of how Scripture has educated me through the Holy Spirit ex for sure. So I love you all. I hope this was a little treat for you. I'm sorry I didn't do a newscast videos. It's coming very soon. There's a lot to talk about. Um, I've been in talks with uh, Craig, a brother in Christ in South Africa. And he basically and his family are going through some troubling times. They're not really in Durban uh, where the terrible riots and, and just tr atrocities are going on with the burning down of uh, buildings and places of business, even destroying the electrical power plants. So it's very disturbing to me that these things are going on because all of this is coming to America in mass. This is going to get much, much worse. So I I implore you and I am begging you to get out of the cities Make sure that you understand what you're growing and learn what these plants are in your area, wherever you live. Grab a local edible and medicinal wild 
foods, foraging things from the library. Obviously, if you go to any library, you can uh, join for free and they will give you access if you have a computer. Obviously, if you're watching this, you have a computer. If you have access to one, you will be able to download and actually look at books um, for free of all this information about how to live off of the land and forage for food and stuff. And that's kind of what Shmita is going to be about for me. So next year at this time, I'll be foraging tons of food because I'm probably going to be really close to running out of food at this time next year. But I'm, I'm only one person now, so I'll be able to delegate uh, my, little, my little stash. So anyway, the riots and all of this chaos and the wicked are still going to be doing what they're doing. It's unfortunate, but, you know, Craig even said to me in one of the last emails that he had given to me is that his family is okay. Him and his family are okay. The cops that have resigned from their position uh, basically went to their own home and their own neighborhoods and banded together to protect their own to protect who they love and their neighbors and so that's why the police force has basically been removed and the military in South Africa has been implemented to come in so food is a huge 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 commodity right now so they have clean water but food is scarce okay this should be a lesson to all of us right now it's time to prepare it's time to observe God's laws because the reason why we're going through all of these judgments and all of these um, chastisements these are chastisements being brought upon the world so people will repent and turn from their sins and start following Yahweh's ways to the letter uh, take the Bible literally, folks. If you don't do that, you're not walking with God. And you want to be like Enoch. You want to walk with God so he can take you. So know your plants. Know what the leaves look like. Know what the berries look like. And when you do test them, make sure that when you first test a berry, and God forbid, don't eat anything that is white. <laughs> that is usually always poisonous. Make sure you know what you're putting in your mouth before you do it. And again, I love you all so very dearly. You have no idea how, what a treasure it is to be able to have your fellowship here on YouTube. What that means to me. And I hope that we will continue to have our fellowship together in the kingdom of God to come. And it's coming soon. So you need to get prepared. Repent now for the day is coming. Yahweh's foot is in the threshold, and he is about ready to send his son to get his bride. Look up, be patient, pray, and wait for his answer. He will not disappoint. I love you all so very much. Maranatha, everyone, and come quickly, Lord Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach. We need your kingdom here now. Praise Yah.